This is the ninth video of my reporting from General Convention in Salt Lake City. As you can tell, I'm not dressed in a clergy collar tonight. That's because, blessedly, we had a night off. So our deputation went to a great little tapas restaurant and took a rickshaw by transportation back. You may see the photo on Instagram if you're following me or on Facebook. It was a wonderful break from all of the intensity of legislation. We in House of Bishops today spent most of our time dealing with structure issues. There really is a serious revamping of the structures of the Episcopal Church. Now, revamping in terms of administration. We have always been administratively a very top-heavy denomination. Lots and lots and lots of people working in various departments to do all kinds of things. The structure was very appropriate for who the Episcopal Church was 25 years ago. But we've shrunk considerably since then. Our focus has changed. And therefore, we really have been living with an outmoded system of governance. And therefore, a task force was established, actually now almost three years ago, called TREK. And that stands for Reimagining the Episcopal Church. They came with a lot of proposals. What's happened is many of them were whittled away, but what is remaining is a far leaner structure with a greater level of accountability and being able to do so for less money. All of that is a very, very good thing indeed. I've been supportive of the Trek resolutions that have passed. There have been some others that I would not have supported, like taking House of Deputies and House of Bishops and combining them into a unicameral house, I oppose that because what that would have created was uh, a situation where the rule and the teaching authority, especially of bishops, would have been significantly undercut. There are other things like that that I think wisely never made it out of committee. But some of the things that we're working on now I think actually will be far more helpful in the Episcopal Church as a whole being more responsive to the needs of local dioceses. So for that, I'm actually very excited. The other thing that you should note that today was the House of Deputies took up the marriage resolutions that were passed by the House of Bishops not all that long ago. They passed pretty much unaltered. And so both in House of Bishops and in House of Deputies, resolutions were passed, which in fact changed the definition of marriage according to the traditions of the Episcopal Church, as well as developing liturgies that would be appropriate for same-sex couples. I today published, and you'll find it online, my response to the Supreme Court decision, and I would urge you to read it because it's talking about how should Christians respond. The other thing that will be coming up soon is that tomorrow afternoon there will be a statement that will be read in public, disseminated to the press, and it will be available in our various media sites on the group called the Communion Partner Bishops which are more biblically orthodox bishops here in the United States who have taken a stand to say, in essence, we disassociate ourselves from the resolutions that have recently been passed here at the, in the Episcopal Church. We were joined by almost all of the bishops in Latin America for whom the, this is a very, very troubling situation indeed. And so while we are small in number, the fact of the matter is, is that we do represent a constituency that would not support the things that we have, have been passed at General Convention. The other thing that you ought to know is that when that statement is published, it will be sent to the Archbishop of Canterbury and many of the other archbishops around the communion who also would not support what General Convention has done. In fact, Archbishop Justin K uh, Welby has already gone on record expressing his disappointment and talking about the ad added burden that our resolutions will cause the wider Anglican communion. The communion is in a place of difficulty because many of them do not want to come together with some of the leaders within the Episcopal Church. Communion partner bishops are considered an exception to that because we are people who publicly stand for a, mid a more biblically orthodox understanding of the classical Christian faith. So stay tuned for that. Those things will be released tomorrow. Um, you should also know that our deputation in the House of Deputies has been clear. 
articulate on the floor. Several of them have gotten up to speak. They've been very, very well received. There is a wonderful sense of graciousness in the midst of it all, and our deputation has certainly risen to the occasion. I want you to know that I am proud of every one of them, and I'm looking forward to all of us meeting back in July to do our presentation to you, not only about what has happened, but what kind of impact will that have on the Episcopal Diocese of Central Florida. So again, thank you for your prayers and for your support. We're heading to the finish line Friday evening, just 48 hours from now, we will be done. And at that point, this convention will be history and we will be working out the implications. So thank you very, very much and I appreciate you continuing to watch these. God bless you, bye-bye.